I rise today, Madam President, to support, like my colleague from Pennsylvania, an increase in the federal minimum wage. I'm a proud co-sponsor of the Minimum Wage Fairness Act, which would give 16 and a half million Americans a much deserved raise. I'm incredibly proud of the important step that Minnesota took to raise the minimum wage earlier this week, just a few weeks ago, or earlier this month, just a few weeks ago, the governor and the Minnesota State Legislature took this big step for workers and families, and because of this, hundreds of thousands of hardworking Minnesotans will themselves receive a raise. This is a big deal. Before this increase, Minnesota's state minimum wage was actually lower than the federal minimum wage. I'd like to talk a little bit about why Minnesota has taken this important step. Minnesotans believe that if you work full time, 52 weeks a year, you should be able to put food on the table and a roof over your family's head. They believe that if you work hard in America, you should have a, you should have a chance to work your way up into the middle class. As I've traveled around Minnesota, I've heard from people all over the state who've been working long, long hours and yet struggle to support their families, to work their way to the middle class and provide a brighter future for their children. As a state, we recognized that there, are, there were too many people working really hard at one, two, sometimes three jobs and we're still struggling to get by. Parents have been wondering how they're going to be able to pay for their kids' college or even how to make the next car payment. Instead, they've been working 60-hour weeks and missing out on spending precious time with their children. And that's why I am proud that Minnesota has now joined the 20 other, 21 other states with minimum wages higher than the federal minimum. And in Washington, I'm going to keep working to do my part to help Minnesota workers. Recent research confirms that what we've seen in Minnesota is happening across America. In a survey last year of workers earning less than $10 an hour, two-thirds of these workers said they are not meeting or just meeting their basic living expenses. Two-thirds of these workers report needing public assistance. Public assistance. Two in five said they can't afford additional education and training. With wages too low, these workers are trapped. They're trapped in poverty. Now the economy is getting better, but raising the minimum wage is about doing everything we can to make sure it gets better for everyone. Last year, our nation's largest businesses saw record profits. The market finished last year up over 26%, its best return since the 1990s. Raising the minimum wage is about making sure that Minnesotans and workers across the country get to be a part of this improving economy. That's why Minnesota has taken this important step. We know that a Strong minimum wage and a strong middle class go hand in hand. That's why I support raising the federal minimum wage to a level that allows people to work their way to a better life. Work their way to a better life. For decades, the federal minimum wage has lost its value. If the federal minimum wage had kept pace with inflation since its peak value in the 1960s, today it would be worth over $10.50 an hour. Today, the federal minimum uh, wage is just $7.25 an hour. So when families have had to pay more for food and rent and utilities, childcare and education, the minimum wage not only hasn't kept up, it's gone down. And it's not just minimum wage workers who haven't seen an increase in wages. Since the 1970s, we've seen worker productivity grow by 135%, while the average wages for middle-class workers have not changed. 
So Americans are work, working harder than ever, but average wages are stuck, and the minimum wage has actually, it's been declining. Now let me tell you about what the minimum, raising the minimum wage would mean to one Minnesotan. Her name is Mizrak. She's the mother of two and works at the airport as a cleaner where she makes a low wage. Because she couldn't make ends meet, she had to take a second job assisting passengers in wheelchairs who need help. She's been doing this for four years. And during that time, she's received only one raise worth just 80 cents an hour. She doesn't get vacation days or sick days or time off with her children. She wants to help her children finish college, and they want to finish college. So they can be sure that if they work hard, that will be a path out of poverty and into the middle class. For Mizrak, even though she works over 60 hours per week, she and her family are just barely scraping by. Bringing the minimum wage back to a level that can support a family is the first step in restoring the promise that if you work hard, you can build a better life for yourself and your family. Sometimes people ask, why raise the minimum wage to 9.50 an hour, as we did in Minnesota, or to 10.10, as we want to do? They say, why not leave minimum wage workers alone to figure out things for themselves? Now, I don't, I don't believe that raising the minimum wage is going to solve all the problems that working families face today. They need more than a minimum wage. They need good jobs and good schools and good roads to provide a better future for themselves and for their children. But I support raising the minimum wage to 10 10 an hour because it's a wage that says Americans value work. It's a minimum guarantee that anyone who shows up 40 hours a week and ready to work should be able to provide food and shelter for themselves and their children and should not live in poverty. Other people say that we don't need to raise the minimum wage because it's, it's not working families who earn the minimum wage. Instead, they say it's mainly teenagers and their first job who earn the minimum wage. No. In fact, the vast majority of workers who would get a raise under this bill are working adults. Working adults, including approximately 350,000 adults in Minnesota. One quarter are parents including over 85,000 parents in our state. The parents would see a raise from the bill we are considering are the parents of 14 million children. An estimated 150 of them in Minnesota. These are kids the American Pediatric Association says do this. These are kids who, you know, uh, we know that kids who have deprivation have trauma. There's different kinds of deprivation. And we know it makes it harder for them to learn. It changes their brain chemistry to be under that much stress. So, Let's do it for these kids. The majority, 56% of Minnesotans who would be affected by an increase are women. Nationwide, one in five working mothers would see a raise under this bill. One in five working mothers. And 6.8 million workers and their families would be lifted out of poverty. Raising the minimum wage is good for working families, and it's good for the economy. It boosts economic activity and helps local businesses. A study from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago found that increasing the federal minimum wage to $10 an hour could boost GDP by up to 0.3 percentage points. In a recent analysis of state employment data, Goldman Sachs noted that based on their analysis 
of states that increased their minimum wage at the start of 2014, the employment in impact, if any, from a higher federal minimum wage would be small relative to the normal volatility of, in the market. A higher minimum wage, I would ask uh, the chair for about uh, two minutes or a minute and a half. Is there objection? Without objection. Well, in that case, two minutes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> a higher minimum wage also helps our economy because increasing the minimum wage boosts the purchasing power of consumers and creates more customers for local businesses. People earning minimum wage spend, spend the money they're earning. The Economic Policy Institute estimates that the increased economic activity from an, an increase to $10.10 minimum wage could create 85,000 new jobs and boost GDP by $22.2 billion over the three years of implementation. Increasing the minimum wage helps businesses in another way, too. Workers who are better paid are also more productive and less likely to quit. That means businesses save on recruiting and training costs. It also means they have better, more loyal, harder-working employees. Businesses in Minnesota understand this. A few months ago, I spoke with Danny Schwartzman, the owner of Common Roots Cafe and Catering in Minneapolis. Danny pays his employees a minimum of $11 per hour, plus benefits like paid time off and health insurance. Danny has written, quote, over time, other businesses will see what I have seen, that paying people more yields more for the bottom line. It's easier to recruit and retain people. Happier employees are more likely to provide better customer service. Lower turnover means dramatically lower training costs and better employee performance, unquote. Danny understands that his business will do better if his workers are doing better. It's time that Congress follow Minnesota's example. The minimum wage is about making sure that work pays. It's about the American dream. If you work hard and take responsibility, you can put a roof over your head provide a decent life for your children, and help them get ready for the future. It's been too long since the federal minimum wage kept that promise to America's workers and their children, and that's why we need to raise it today. I thank the Chair, Madam President. Thank you.